So Alyssa Wilson is the head of nutrition at Cigna. She's a registered dietitian, and she's here today to answer any questions that we all might have about the glucose monitor. This is the Cygnos glucose monitor, the one that I use for all of my tests. And um, just so you guys know, I am, an, I am an ambassador for them. I have a link in my bio if you guys are interested in getting one. There's a 15% discount if you want one as well, too. Uh, I'm really excited about this because there's a lot of questions that people have about the monitor. And there's nobody, there's nobody who's better to answer these than you, Alyssa. So thank you for joining us today. Yes, I'm so excited to be here and answer any questions and um, just talk about CGMs and Cygnos and everything all about it. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. And, and I want to add before we get started on the questions here that this thing has really changed my life. Um, I have type 2 diabetes that runs in my family. Uh, and I'm getting on in age now, and I just want to prevent this from happening because statistically I'm at risk for this and I want to kind of stop this before it happens. And, and it's important to note, I think that type two diabetes doesn't happen overnight. This can take decades, uh, to, to develop. And the diet is a key factor here that, that I'm interested in with my tests. And it's something that the glucose monitor can really help with. So that's part of my story. Um, let's start off with the first question here. Uh, just the, the basics. What is a CGM and how does it work? Yes. So a CGM stands for a continuous glucose monitor. It's basically a tiny wearable device, exactly what you showed. I want to have one on now too. And it reads the glucose levels in your interstitial fluids, which is the fluid between the cells. It's attached to your body via a little microfilament and it continuously, like if I can, I can show you, I'm wearing one too. And it continuously monitors your glucose levels. And basically the CGM sends the data to our Cygnos app, which is where everything happens. And, and that's what you've been, you know, showing your audience um, and all your, all your videos. And yeah, so it's basically this wearable device that is continuously measuring your glucose. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's really convenient because that information goes right to your phone. You don't have to worry. It automatically does it. You don't have to scan anything or anything like that. You just put this thing on and all of that information is going there. So you have 24 hour, seven day a week monitoring. You're, you're gonna know exactly what's going on with your blood sugar when you wear this thing. And how does this differ from a finger stick? Oh yeah, so a finger stick, um, you know, when we take a finger stick, that's first measuring your blood glucose. And that really is just a snapshot in time. So that's giving us, you know, that information right then and there. But the great thing about the CGM is to, it's providing continuous data, which gives you such insight into, you know, just your body and it's around the clock. So you get all this data, you know, not only just maybe an hour or two hours after a meal when you're taking a finger stick, but you get it the entire time every five minutes. And you can also see your overnight readings too, which gives us great insight into your overall health. So. It's really just, um, instead of a snapshot, it's giving us the big picture of your overall health. Yeah. That's what I love about it. You know, one of the biggest things that I've learned with mine is that if I eat carbohydrates late at night and I go to bed, like, let's say I'm out with friends and we have pizza and a couple of beers or something like that. And I stop eating at 10 o'clock and then I go to bed at like 1130 or midnight my blood sugar skyrockets all through the night it lasts almost six 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 and a half hours sometimes yeah. and i've really learned that i should not be eating carbs late at night like that that's a very big lesson and i would have never known that had i not had the, the monitor right so yeah it's yeah, that's valuable a, and yeah it's a question that our our members our users ask all the time it's like why is my blood sugar spiking at night or like what is going on and we take a look and, you know, they're able to log in the app, log what they're eating, log notes or tags, like if they were stressed or if they had poor sleep. Um, but yeah, like eating too close to uh, bedtime can definitely affect your readings overnight. So, you know, experimenting, pushing your dinner up a few hours before you go to bed, making sure it's a balanced meal. There's lots of vegetables in it. We've even noticed, you know, those who are drinking alcohol at night, they can see delayed spikes. So there's a lot of insight that you can see with the CGM and those overnight readings that, um, you know, you, you can't see on a finger stick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, 
I really um, try to give myself four hours um, after eating before I go to sleep because if I don't, I pay the price for that. And then it's, for me, if that happens, if I eat late at night and I, I'm spiking through the night, um, the next day is low energy, brain fog. It really has an effect. And it, 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 what I really love about the signals is that it shows you what's going on and it gives you an opportunity to be accountable for it. You know, so yes. kind of now funny. I know, now I know. And there's no denying it. Like before you, it's, it's pretty much guesswork. You know, you're guessing, am I, am I, is my blood sugar okay? Well, I'm eating this right and I'm eating that right. But I think it's important to note that everybody reacts differently to certain foods, depending on a lot of different factors, right? So um, I respond very badly to, um, to pasta and other people, they may have more of an issue with potatoes or something like that. So I think it's really a, a, an important thing to note that just because you're following the rules of it all doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing it right because you just don't know what's actually going on until you're monitoring it. That's, that's the reality of it. So for me, that's why, um, having a monitor like the signals is such a game changer. It really puts things into perspective for you. So what's up next is, uh, this is a very common question is like, what hardware is being used with this? Cause I know there's only a couple one, or, I don't know if there's two or three different hardware manufacturers here, but maybe you can give us some insight into that. Yeah. So the CGM we use is the Dexcom G6. And so um, with the CGM, like you had mentioned earlier, you don't have to take your phone and scan it and you are getting just glucose data every five minutes sent directly to your phone. So you're not going to miss out on any of that data. And the transmitter, which is it's covered um, with the Cygnos athletic patch, but um, the transmitter is sending that data to your phone every five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I love about it. You don't have to worry about it. It's just there. The data is coming. Um, what's up next here? Does it hurt? And this is the, <laughs> this is what my main cons when I thought about doing this whole thing, I was thinking, you know what, I really want to, like, I've got members of my family who have type two diabetes, including my mom. And I'm like, I've got a serious sweet tooth. And I said, I really want to get a handle on this. So I started looking at CGMs online and I was thinking to myself, is this like a needle that's stuck in your arm and this has got to be painful. And I was really, that was my primary concern about it. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about it? concerned about that because it can be intimidating and just saying like oh my gosh this device is stuck to you know our skin but it's you know it is not painful at all you should not feel it go in there is a, i have um, an example of what the sensor looks like and so this is the applicator and you just put this on and you click the orange button and you should not feel it the the filament that goes right under the skin it's we describe it as like a kitten's whisker so you really don't feel it and it's just a one-time press and it's there and it stays on for 10 days. So you, after 10 days, you just peel it off like a Band-Aid, you save that transmitter and then put it into the next the next sensor. So yes, it does not hurt at yeah. all. I know, that was my concern. And you know, I, and as far as like, is it durable? Like I, I go boxing with it. I do boxing and there's no problem. You can swim with it. You can do pretty much everything with it, right? Yeah. Exercise, swim, shower, you know, you can do everything with it. Um, yeah. it's, it can go in water up to eight feet deep and you can go into a hot tub. So yes, um, we we have the athletic covers, the Cygnus ones that our members love to put on just as like an added layer of protection, but it's totally yeah. fine. It's waterproof even without the athletic cover. Yeah, yeah. Um, who do you recommend it for? Oh, this is a great question um, because you know, typically um, continuous glucose monitoring is used for those who have diabetes. But what's yeah. fascinating is that we are using it for those looking for optimal health. Someone like you, disease prevention, maybe diabetes runs in your family. Um, anyone who wants to gain insight into their own health. As we know, you know, one in three Americans are pre-diabetic. Uh, you know, and, and there is recent research that um, shows that non-diabetics are seeing like these fluctuations in their glucose. And so we know that those fluctuations, fluctuations can lead to, you know, trouble losing weight or, you know, low energy levels. And so yeah. this is beauty of the CGM is putting it on and seeing how are you responding? What's going on with your glucose? And then what can we do to help prevent those spikes? 
Yeah. Is there is there a correlation with people that are not in pre-diabetes state? The people that do spike normally when they're eating carbohydrates, are they more susceptible, do you know, to type 2 diabetes than people who aren't spiking as often? So what we're looking for when we're looking at the spikes is, you know, we want to avoid those repetitive spikes, especially over 140. So for example, like last night I went out with my family, we went to a pizza place and I definitely saw spikes. Um, but you know, this we're looking at like your daily overall, like is your breakfast that you're eating every morning spiking you? Are you having poor sleep every night to where you're just so hungry, you're craving carbs, you're craving caffeine, and you're, you're kind of on that blood sugar roller coaster all day. Those are the things that we're looking at. That occasional spike here and there is um, not really like anything to be too concerned about, but we're really looking at the trends in the big picture. And like you mentioned, this can, you know, poor glucose control or glucose dysregulation and leading to, you know, prediabetes and insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, that can take a very long time. Um, yeah. you, when we think about blood sugar dysregulation, how you feel it like in the minute, you know, anybody can experience that. That's like the crashing. Do you have sugar cravings all day? Do you rely on that caffeine that you have to have at two o'clock just to get you through the work day? Um, are, are you irritable, like moody? You know, these are the things that um, can show that you may be seeing, seeing some of those, uh, like, like that higher glucose variability. Yeah. I mean, for me, part of the reason, like oftentimes, like, I won't do something until I'm scared into doing it. I need to be scared to move and to do something when it, when it comes to my health. And what I was feeling before I got the CGM, before I started doing all of this stuff, the main thing that was really noticeable for me was my energy levels throughout the day. I was just low, low energy. And I thought, what's going on? Is this just getting older? What's happening? And if I ate a meal, especially if it was a high carbohydrate meal and a high refined carbohydrate meal, I would almost go into like, you know, you go into the food coma and it's it. The problem with that, that is that my productivity went down to like 10% of what I can be. So yeah. that's one of the main reasons why I decided to do this. It was my energy level. I had some other things as well, too. I had some tingling in my hands and feet from time to time. And those are kind of warning signs as well, too. But the energy level what was the really big one for me. Yeah. And I noticed that too myself before, like once I put the CGM, I saw it. I saw it in real time. You know, the breakfast that I was eating every day was giving me a large spike. And I was able to make a few adjustments um, to help stabilize my glucose. And I wasn't experiencing like hunger an hour later after eating it. And even at night, like you said, you know, I was having dessert like right before bed or in bed, you know, hours. And I was seeing these huge spikes overnight, the higher fasting level the next day. And more carb cravings the next day. But what I did was, you know, taking that data from the CGM, I actually took the same dessert instead of eating it on its own late at night, just put it at the end of my meal at dinner. Yep. And I noticed that my glucose levels were stable. You know, so it's this insight that you can really use and take, it doesn't have to be a huge change or you don't have to get right. rid of your, really just these small changes. And, and our app helps you along the way with that, like with our activities. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I love about it too, is because if you're like me, and I know a lot of people who are like this, it's very difficult to stick with a really super healthy lifestyle. Like it's hard to eat broccoli and chicken breasts every for every meal. We don't but, like um, no. you know, and I don't recommend that yeah, either, but um, to stick with it, like every once in a while I crave chocolate, I got to have some chocolate. But now I know the consequences but not only that, I've been able to determine what can help to mitigate that blood sugar spike so I can take precautionary measures. Like I can yeah. take apple cider vinegar, I can have a fiber supplement, I can do whatever before I indulge. And that's yeah. really helping me. And then I can monitor to see if it actually worked what I was doing, you know, yeah. what, what, what measures I had taken. And that's invaluable because otherwise you're just guessing and you can think you're doing okay, but that may not be the case. So I really love that about this. Um, type two diabetics. I know you guys are going to be opening up your service to them as well too. Uh, what's that? What's that about? Yeah. So right now, um, our Signos, uh, the program is, you know, for those who are not diabetic, but we will be, um, opening up to those who have type two diabetes and are not on insulin. And so that's going to be happening in the upcoming months, which is really exciting for us. 
Yeah, I think that's great. I think a lot of people are having difficulty getting uh, CGMs uh, because of their insurance and things like yeah. that. Uh, does that's another question? Is a lot of people ask is what about insurance? Does insurance cover the service? Yeah. So currently, we do not accept insurance, um, but we do allow you to use your HSA or, or your FSA card to pay for the program, and then but you'll still need to go through like your specific HSA or FSA provider um, mm -hmm. for approval. But we do have a lot of members that go that that route. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always say to people, you know, when you look at it at first, it's, oh, it's kind of costly. But it's important to remember that the longer you get it, the the cheaper it is per month on a, on a monthly basis. But also, I look at it this way. That, that information that I get from having this, even if it's for a month or three months, that information, once you get that, you know, and you know what foods are bad for you. You know what times of day that eating is doing to you, that information you take with you. So even if you get it for a short amount of time, um, it's that information is very, very valuable. And that can save you thousands of dollars in medications later on that you would have to be getting if you ignore these yes. problems that with your diet, you know, so I really think it's valuable. Um, and I can't see, even though I know all of the stuff that's going on, I just love having that uh, certainty that this is what's going on with my blood sugar right now. And when I do indulge, it's a constant reminder of what I'm doing to my body. And it throws me back into line. You know what I mean? It's, it's just such a you're, great way to be. You're getting that data. And like, it's not just the food that impacts our glucose. There's so many other things, like probably by that's right now, it may be elevated from, you know, nerves or stress, um, that can impact it. Yeah. Of course, it, or being dehydrated, um, exercise, movement, all these things impact our glucose. So, you know, it's it's great to be able to track the food, but also to have insight into these other factors. And even if you just focus on, you know, sleep, getting enough water, you may be able to tolerate foods the next day that you you may not have if you had really poor sleep or um, were dehydrated, yeah. at least stressed. So um, you can also kind of learn more about yourself that way too. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's another big thing that I learned too, was that my baseline, my fasting blood sugar level, when I wake up in the morning, if I get a bad night's sleep, like, and I have some insomnia issues and I'm working on that and trying to clean up all my sleeping environment and everything like that. But if I don't get enough sleep, my baseline, my fasting blood sugar level rate rises up for the next day. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see it on the CG. I can see it on the signal. So I can just say, wow that lack of sleep is affecting me. And then when I do have carbs, I'm not as, I'm more sensitive to them. Like if I have, I, I try to standardize some of my tests. So I eat things that are like exact amounts, like a Snickers bar. A Snickers bar is going to be the same. If I eat a banana uh, for my test, the, 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 the glucose response may differ from fruit to fruit because banana sizes, and how ripe they are, how much resistance starch is there. So I try, I try to have standardized the, the test that I do by eating like a Snickers bar or something that's that kind of, um, and if I don't get enough sleep, you can really see that my resistance to those carbohydrates is really, really low. And I spike higher, sometimes 20, 20% 20 more just from having a bad night's sleep. Yeah, we see that. We see that in the data um, with our members. I've seen it myself personally too. So it, it kind of, you know, a lot of times we just think that we can just thrive off of like, you know, maybe working nonstop, poor sleep, you know, short amount of sleep. And that's just like the way it's our new norm. We're really taking a step back and making sure that we're getting quality sleep. We're moving throughout the day. We're providing our bodies like nutrient dense foods. And you can yeah. see that. Honestly, I've seen like weeks where I'm in higher stress, where my baseline is higher. I'm seeing more spikes. I'm seeing, yep. you no know, readings that are high. So yeah, that is definitely something that it's very common um, that we see, especially in our members too. Yeah. And what I like about knowing all of these factors, so you can determine what, what your top factors are. And like, for example, stress, I've seen myself in a stressful situation. I, I, I spike as well. So whether it's the food you're eating, the time of day that you're eating those foods, whether it's your sleep, your hydration, or all of these things that you've mentioned, once you know those, you can put them, you can say, okay, 
here's the top five things that are spiking my blood sugar or affecting my blood sugar. And you can say, I may not be able to deal with all of these all at once, but let's for this month, let's concentrate on the top two and see if we can start to minimize those. And it gives you the ability to kind of gradually work with yourself yeah. to bring this stuff down. You should, it's, it's, it's very difficult to make huge lifestyle changes all at once, but when you're monitoring it gives you that information to see, you know, you can set goals and you can see if you're achieving those goals. That's what I really love about it. And, and you can pick the top two or three things that are problematic for you and you can start to work on those. It's a great, great way to do it. Baby yeah, steps. Yeah. And baby steps. Exactly. You know, it's, it's very difficult to make a huge change on everything. And then, you know, yeah. by the time you do that, you just give up because it's not sustainable. And, and right. the signals all these expert created activities that um, teach you how you personally respond to different things, whether it's, um, you know, trying to exercise before or after eating or changing the meal order or eating slower. It's amazing what can happen if you just eat slower, but it just teaches yeah. you how to make the changes, you know, instead yeah. of a huge fall on everything, which is, you know, that's not very motivating and it's hard to do. So that's why we take you through these activities so you can learn about yourself and then make these small changes you know, daily and they add up over yeah. time. Yeah. And I love that. The app also has uh, artificial intelligence that kind of figures out what you are, what you're reacting to as well, too. It makes suggestions for you. I love that. There's different things that it offers to you as far as what to do. So you're not on your own um, with it. That's awesome information as well, too. It's not only what these foods are doing to you, but here's what you might want to try to deal with. I love on the app here when I'm using it, it alerts me and says, you're spiking, you're starting to spike. So you have an opportunity to curb this spike by going out for a little walk. And that's awesome. That can save you like spiking 20 for, or like 30, 40% of your spike. It can really bring it down. So that's amazing. Yeah. That is one of like, that is one of my favorite things about our app too, is because we're using the Dexcom G6 CGM and we're getting that data every five minutes without taking your phone and scanning it. You get this yeah. real time feedback. And so if you are experiencing a fast rise and your glucose levels are going up, we can notify you and say, Hey, like your glucose levels are rising. Like let's take a walk and then we'll have a countdown. Or if you've been loving exercise, yeah. we can specific recommendations of where your heart rate should be and all these things to so take action right then and there. And I've, I've experienced many spikes before and I've seen it where, you know, I'm like, okay, let me actually get up and walk around the house or um, go up and down the stairs or do, you know, some squats or push up. It really does help um, what you've seen too. It helps basically take that glucose and bring it into the muscles to use. So we're not seeing as big of a spike. And that has been a game changer from just to take action right there and to be notified about that. That's huge. For, yeah. for sure. I've noticed that when I start spiking, even if I get up and start doing housework, it helps just How being active. So yeah. I've done tests where I ate, <laughs> I've eaten something and I hit the couch and I spike and I need the same thing. And I'll walk around and do chores and laundry and, you know, maybe, you know, different house chores and even walk to the store or something like that really helps. It's surprising what that activity does. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really cool as well. Um, I'm also curious to know that uh, I know you you have tens of thousands of, of members uh, through Cygnus that are getting great results. What are some of the results that these members are seeing? What are the benefits that oh, wow. they're reporting to you? I'm really curious about that. Oh my gosh. Well, we've seen so many things. Um, one thing that you know we focus on too is weight loss. So members are being able to lose weight um, without calorie counting, without restricting, basically by focusing on stabilizing their glucose levels. Um, so we're seeing weight loss. We're seeing more energy, better sleep you know, coming off medication, migraines going away. Um, it's really, it, it's really incredible what our members are experiencing. And, um, you know, you can see this just through wearing CGM and focusing on stabilizing your blood sugar. Maybe they're not uh, seeing like having all those cravings or maybe, you know, they're not as moody. I've seen that in myself, you know, ability is gone, um, you know, from wearing the CGM. So it's, it, we love having our members, you know, get out of that pre-diabetic range and improve their labs. Um, but we also love hearing like, Hey, like I'm just feeling energized during the day. 
Like, I just feel good overall. So that's, that's, you know, those are both huge wins in our book. Yeah. Yeah. For me, my productivity goes up. So yeah. you can get so much more done in the day when you're energized and, and you you're, just want to. Yeah. You don't have that brain fog. You know, that's that, the symptom that's of being a problem. It's and a I can't... huge problem. So with, it's... with the amount, like you're just so much more productive. I find when you're managing your blood sugar properly, uh, it's a, it was a big factor for me. Like I was like concerned. I thought if I can't get my energy back, I'm, I'm in big trouble here because I can't do what I want to do yeah. through the day. Like, yeah. I am just on the Probably sofa. Fun. Just, yeah. Yeah. It's not fun. Right. It's not fun. And so that's in the future, you know, that's, that's, you know, one of the biggest things is like, you know, making sure that we're not on the path towards type two diabetes, or if we are, we can do something about it and, you know, let's turn the other way and get back to that optimal. Yeah. And surprisingly, the changes you can make, they're not drastic. Mm -hmm. Small changes can make like little incremental changes that you can adopt and actually practice that you can stick with Yeah, stuff that you can stick with. And it has a big impact. That's what I love about it. It's not like you have to stop. It's not like you have to eat broccoli and chicken breasts all day, every day. So that's great. Uh, what's next here? I have a list of all these different things here. So, uh, what's a good glucose level and how do you make, uh, how do you know if you're pre diabetic? Oh, okay. So for non-diabetics, when we're looking at our glucose levels, we're looking at a fasting less than a hundred um, milligrams per deciliter. An optimal would be, you know, that 70 to 85 range. And two hours after eating, we're looking for our, our numbers to be less than 140 milligrams per deciliter. And we really don't want to see those repetitive spikes over 140. Um, the great thing about Cygnos is that you actually get this personalized range in the app to see like yeah. what your range is. And um, we recommend, you know, trying to increase the time and range and also like mitigate those spikes. But it is important to know that we are not diagnosing with the CGRM. Um, we're just using it as a tool. So like if, if you're um, to see if you're, you know, diagnosed with prediabetes, you can, um, you know, go to your doctor, take an A1C test, a fasting blood sugar, um, you know, fasting insulin. There's different things that you can test for this. Um, but the CGM, we're kind of looking at um, these general numbers. We're looking at the trends and, you know, yeah. did you 60 points to this meal or your sleep, how did this, or your stress, your exercise, what happened with that? So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of looking at those trends and looking at your personalized range that you get and, um, in going off of that. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, when I started this whole thing about nine months ago, my, uh, A1C is 5.3 and I tested about a month ago. It's 5.3 as well. Now there's a reason for that. Normally I think with this data, I could have brought that down a little bit, but you can see on all the tests that I'm doing, I'm testing a lot of junk food. And the reason being is that to get a test, like to do a test, I need to spike my blood sugar. So what I'll do is I'll do a benchmark test with a chocolate bar, like a Snickers bar. So I take that by itself on an empty stomach after a 16 hour fast, and I'm looking for the spike. Now I say, that's my benchmark and it'll, it might go up like 30 points. Right. Um, but that's what's keeping me from being able to lower that a1c but the good news is that that hasn't it hasn't gone up so um that's my issue i want to i want to give information to the to the viewers but and i'm kind of sacrificing um, <laughs> my, <laughs> but but to me and, and people ask me about this all the time they warn me they say hey you're really like doing a number on your blood sugar with these tests and and it's true to a degree but when i look back before I started this, before I had the CGM, I was probably spiking three, four times a day with yeah. Which the food is, that I was eating. You no, know, with, right. especially with the American diet, you know, that's not uncommon to like see those repetitive spikes, but it's really putting yeah. on the CGM and actually seeing the data. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, eventually I'm going to slow down on that and maybe only spike three days a week, maybe, and then do some other foods that are healthier foods. I'm going to try and do more of that content in the future, but I do know that I'm doing it for, <laughs> for science, even though it's not <laughs> real science, but I mean, 
it's an issue, but at least I'm not degrading, you know, which for people on my age, that happens. If you continue to eat the way you eat without paying attention to it, it's generally a slippery slope into prediabetes or type two diabetes. And the, and the statistics like confirm that it's, it's a worldwide epidemic what's going on with it. So, and you're doing these so helpful for your viewers to see this. And then, you know, at Cygnus, we love doing our own internal experiments. And then our members, like we've brought them in, in our Facebook group and um, to try out the experiments with us, like you mentioned, using maybe apple cider vinegar or um, just like resistant starch or, or barber, barbering. Um, so we, we like doing experiments too and seeing like, uh, I think a recent one was even like these exercise snacks to where you can do like an intense workout for a minute, like a few times a day and seeing how that affects your glucose. So we love yep. experiments. Um, you are doing like some with the candy bars and then like there's just so many that you can end up doing to kind of reduce the the candy bar so often and try yeah. to open things. So you, you got to, there's, yeah. there's a lot. There. Yeah, I've been testing Big Macs this week and it's like <laughs> after like the third one in a row, three days in a row of oh. eating a Big Mac for breakfast, it's like, okay, I, how did you feel? I want this to be over. <laughs> how did you feel? Uh, you know what? It's it's true to what you said earlier about your first meal of the day. When you spike that, I think like the cravings are bad for the rest of the day. Energy levels are down. I want sugar to bring those energy levels back up. So that first meal of the day, this is what I've learned, even though I'm still doing it for the test. But when I spike first thing in the morning or first thing when I fast and then I break my fast, there are consequences. Yeah. And likewise, I've noticed that if I eat like, a good meal, like a, a blood sugar friendly meal, high fiber, protein, good fats, and low refined carbohydrates, I'm steady the rest of the day. So that first meal really sets me up for success. Yeah. Energy is higher. Everything that first meal is very important to me. That's another great thing. I it does. It's that first meal sets the tone for the day. You know, if you're having a big meal, be craving foods, you're going to have low energy. I always say how you start the day is probably how you're going to end the day. You're going to want all the sweets right before bed. Um, so really starting off your morning with a balanced meal, having enough protein, fiber, healthy fats, you know, ideally like fruit and vegetable carbs um, to help balance, you know, that breakfast in the morning can really set you up for success. So for sure. that, trying not to start your day on that blood sugar roller. Yeah, big, big lesson for me there, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I have a confession. When I do the Snickers test, I go to the store and I buy those four packs of Snickers. And there's been a couple of days where I ate the Snickers, I did the test, and then later on in the day, I said, gee, I still have three more of those Snickers bars in my cupboard here, and I end up eating them. It's happened. It's because it puts you on that roller coaster. So I spike, and then I and then I go down. Right. And then when I go down, the energy goes down and I want more and I know yeah. they're there. So I, I've done that before. And it just goes to show how important that first meal is. You know, it really affects my craving levels, which is just a, a valuable lesson in itself. So let's see what else we have here. We're getting through this list pretty well. One thing um, to say about you, uh, is that, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of important to wear the CGM, log all of your meals and look at your trends and look at your patterns. You know, we've seen different patterns here. So um, maybe you're starting off the morning with, you know, a typical standard American diet, like uh, cereal and milk and juice, and you're seeing that big spike. Or maybe this is also common. You are so busy. You're getting the kids ready for school. You get have to get to work and you skip breakfast. You're so busy at work. You barely have time to eat lunch or you're eating behind a computer screen. And then, you know, by the time you get home for dinner, you're starving and, you know, because your blood sugar has been low and you're starving and you just want everything in sight. It's not like we crave broccoli to help get those, what that blood sugar level up like our body never. Is smart. No, we don't. Never. I've never craved broccoli. <laughs> no, it's those, you know, that uh, refined carbs or any type of carb that gets our blood sugar up. Then it's like, we're, we're, you know, skipping meals throughout the day or not eating enough. And then we're binging at night. And that's another common pattern that you can see. And you can really see it on the CGM too. Um, that's going to roll over to the next morning. Maybe you're not hungry the next morning because you ate so much right before bed. 
So it's really looking at these oak trends, logging your meals, you know, seeing what your pattern is. It's going to be like, I yeah. eat differently. Husband does. We have different patterns, different jobs. And, um, you know, it's so it's really like getting that individualized uh, data and seeing how that uh, applies to your life and what you can do. Yeah, absolutely. I find that too. If I fat, like if I fast for too long, if I go past my 16 hours, I really, I eat too much for the first meal. And that sets my, that sets me up for failure for the rest of the day as well, too. So I have a, I have a, a sweet spot for my intermittent fasting. I usually do about 16 hours a day. I've done the one meal a day thing. And I find that although it is beneficial, it's very hard for me to stick with. So, um, yeah, I, I found that as well too. So the AI in the Cygnos, um, platform, the app that you get for your phone, it sorts all of that stuff out for you and it makes these suggestions. That's what I love about it too. It's really, really great. You know, there are a bunch of different services out there for the CGMs and I like Cygnos and I've been approached by all of them to, you know, um, to, to go for a, a an affiliate program, but. I like Cygnos. I like that you don't have to scan it every time. It just automatically sends the data. I like the interface. And I also like the customer service that you guys have. And you guys are reasonably priced. Yeah. So all of those things, those that those are the reasons why I settled with you guys. Um, and I really like it. No regrets. Uh, and it's so invaluable to me to have this data. It's just, it really, and, and I know that game changer, everybody uses that, but it's such a cliche, but it really is. It really it is. changes. It, is. it like, changes your. Yeah, I yeah. feel this way, and I am a registered dietitian, and I, you know, know exactly what I should be eating, and maybe the way I was eating, and the timing, or the order, or like you know, maybe the time of day, or how I was moving, or how my sleep was. You know, I know these things, but then seeing it in person, you know, yeah. it allows you to say, okay, this is how my body's responding and everybody is different and everyone's different. They, like we, we're not preaching any specific diet. Um, we're seeing, you know, what works best for you and everyone's different. And we see all the time, people have different responses to the same food. So I'm um, really wearing a CGM and we want as many people to have access to it as possible. Um, yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, it's just the modern diet. We're stuck with all this highly palatable food. They've removed most of the fiber from the foods. And when I look at that, I said, well, why would they remove the fiber from the foods if it's so healthy for us? Well, when you consider, I look at it this way. If you have to eat 100 calories of chocolate versus 100 calories of raw broccoli or raw carrots, you can eat that piece of chocolate in 20 seconds or 10 seconds. Yeah. Because it melts in your mouth and it's easy to eat. Or if you eat the hundred calories with whole foods with all of the fiber intact, you've got to you've got to work, you've got to chew and chew and chew to get yeah. those calories in. So that's a big reason. Another reason it's not only flavor that is the allure to this junk food; it's also that it's easy to eat and it's the texture of it. It's smooth, like a delicious moist and cake is so much more palatable yes. than and uh, broccoli. Yes, you know. They that that's what they do, and they're you know experts in making this food hyper palatable, and it's easy to overeat, and it's easy to sit down and eat it, and not even realize you finished a whole bag, um, of food, and it's gone, and then you want more. So really, um, you know, focusing on real foods, you know, foods that come from the ground, like foods that we see in nature, and making sure, and in that way, the way they're packaged, you know, they're coming with fiber, they're coming with nutrients, and they're giving our bodies and ourselves what we need to function optimally um, versus, you know, those highly processed refined foods, which are doing way more damage. They're hard to avoid because they're everywhere too. And they're, they're shelf stable. And even so, like just every, every, everywhere you go, like I've gone to everywhere. stores, you know, just an office supply store and there's rows of candy, you know, so it is everywhere. But, I will say one thing, this is so important, and this is what we've seen in our members, is when you start to stabilize your blood sugar, when you really start to have those stable glucose readings, and you're not experiencing the highs and lows and not experiencing the spikes, then those cravings tend to go away. And you're in the right headspace yes. and you feel full. Meal takes you from a one meal to the next meal without the need to have something right afterwards. Then you can go to the store, like an office supply store that I recently went to, it's all, all the rows of candy. And you can, you know, say, I don't, 
you're in the right headspace where you don't crave it, you don't want it, and it's not even appetizing. It's not something that you want to incorporate, you know? So yep. that's the benefit of having stable blood sugar is like being able to say like, I actually feel good right now. I'm not hungry. My glucose levels are stable. You know, it's, I, I can resist that versus when you're on that roller coaster, you start the day with the Big Mac, then you have the Snickers and you know where it is and you need to go grab it. You know, so the having stable blood sugar helps you, um, you know, resist that urge and, and fight off, fight off those cravings, which, which is right. huge for actually just di- having those daily cravings and. You know, if you're hangry after a couple of hours, you know, those are signs of, you know, being on that blood sugar roller coaster. Absolutely. And what I find with monitoring is that, you know, it's very easy for our emotional state to override our logic. We all know that Snickers and Snickers bars and Big Macs are not good for you and they're not great for your blood sugar either. So they're going to spike. But oftentimes your cravings and your emotions get the better of you and you do it anyway. The good thing about having the Cygnos for me is that I can't avoid knowing. It reminds me that you spiked your blood sugar again. And I don't know how high it went. And it's like, it's like having somebody beside you saying, you know, it's like having somebody like you, like a dietitian saying, you know what, Justin, this is what's happening to you when you do this. And that reminder helps you to bring your emotional state down in your logical state up so you can make those better decisions because you're constantly aware of what you're doing to yourself and yeah. that information is another valuable point here is when you have that constant reminder you are forced to be held accountable like you can't escape it and say oh well maybe this isn't spiking my blood sugar you're gonna know it is spiking your blood sugar and this is what it's doing to you and this is what so, you can do to help mitigate that spike. But also even with our activities in the app, you know, we take our members through assessing, you know, are they actually hungry at this time? Like, uh, how are they feeling? Because a lot of times think about the reasons why we eat, you no know, celebrations or, and you know, there's so many reasons why we eat, but we, it, we ask you to kind of check in. And um, that's also an important just skill to try and practice this, like when you're at home or after work, like check in, are you physically hungry? Is your stomach growling or do you want the food because it's there, it's in the pantry? Are you stressed? Are you bored? Are you sad, happy? Like, you know, is it an emotional reason? That's important to check in and, and see because maybe it's just you come home from work, you go straight to the fridge, you grab something, you eat it, and, and that's just your routine, but you may not even be hungry at that time. And so we, yeah. you know, having blood sugar can really help with that, but also going through activities and you know, just taking that time to check in will also help. Yeah. And when you spike, it reminds you, it says, Hey, you're spiking. If you want to deal, do something with this, go for a walk, do something, act, do some activity. And that's, that's awesome information as well, too. So let's see what's yeah. up next here. Um, uh, uh, what impacts our glucose levels? I know there are a lot of factors here I and mean, we've touched on some of them already. Um, yeah. from what I know, there are around 50 or more. But yeah. the top ones, I think we've already covered here, stress, hydration, sleep, carb intake, refined carb intake, all of these things. Yeah. What are the top five that I like, what are the top five that you think have the most impact? I think, um, nutrition, you know, what we're eating and that's just not like what it's like, how much, um, what time of day, like, you know, all of that, all, everything about the food, exercise, sleep, stress. Yeah. You know, yeah. water and movement, all those have huge impacts on our glucose. But also, you know, we recommend taking notes in the Cygnos app to see if it may be something else. Are you traveling, which is could be a stressor? Are you taking certain medication? If you start a new supplement, maybe you took an apple cider gummy that's full of sugar and you're spiking the that, you know? Or if you're a woman, where are you in your cycle? I mean, there's so many reasons um, why we can spike. So we recommend using the notes section in the Signos app to log it. So then you can actually go back and see, all right, maybe um, every time I travel, I am spiking. And then, you know, maybe I need to, maybe I'm stopping at the airport and grabbing something that's not great. And maybe I need to pack things with me, get a good night's sleep. There's so many things you can work on, but um, tagging notes is going to be really helpful to kind of dial in exactly what is impacting your glucose. Exactly. That, there's a good point you mentioned there. Like if you're taking like a supplement to manage your blood sugar, 
you can spend a lot of money on these supplements. And how will you know if this supplement is doing something for you unless you're measuring that? I look at that, like when I test apple cider vinegar and I get a ton of people sending me products to test, a lot of them don't work for me. And I know that. So why spend $60 on a bottle of something that's not really doing anything for you? Yeah. So it really helps you determine what's working, what's not. That's that's another great thing for them. Um, what kind of glucose levels do you want for weight loss? Oh, this is this is a good good question. Okay, so we're looking at you know several factors here. I mentioned a time and range, so everybody has a personalized range once they join Signos and they go through our our activities. So if you're looking at a higher percentage of time and range. We've seen members, you know, have weight loss and success with time and range at 70% mm -hmm. um, and all the way to 90%. It really just depends on where you're starting. So if you start eating only at 50%, you can bump up to 60%. That's incredible, you know? So yep. we're looking at time range. And then we're also looking at um, like that glucose variability. So the frequency and the, the height of the spikes and the dips in your glucose. So we want that to be more stable, more of those rounded hills versus the peaks and valleys. So yep. that's factor that we're looking at and and really avoiding those high high spikes you know i would say spike over 30 points um or spikes that take a long time to come down like if it's taking several hours to come back down and you're seeing a large area under the curve those are the things that we want to try to minimize so it's kind of like big picture here looking at time and range the glucose variability or you know the peaks and valleys and then how high your spikes are how long they take to come down and then you know assessing those over time and doing those, you know, small changes, small habits to help, um, have right. more state levels. Yeah. I love in the app, it, sh it very clearly shows you the optimal glucose range. So yeah. I just have to stay in between the lines. Yeah. It's really that simple. You got to try and stay within these lines as much as you can. Exactly. I love that. And that's something that our members, you know, we get great feedback on is it's very easy to understand, you know, with these CGMs are for those who have diabetes, you know? And so when we're looking at a whole new population wearing the device and myself included, I'd never put a CGM on before. And it's, yeah. you know, we teach you how to do it. It's very easy. And then we want to make this as easy as possible um, to start learning, learning more about yourself and, you know, just guiding you through it. And that's what we like to do with just like the simplicity of like the home screen and how to log everything. And, that's really important to us because um, it is kind of, you know, it's it's newer and we just want to like help our members as much as possible interpreting their data. Yeah. I love the ease of use with it. And I've tried it several of them and I love the ease of use in the app. That goes a long, long way because when you get frustrated using it, you're not going to want to use it. Yeah. No. So I like that. I like that about the signals. Okay. Um, how often should you maintain stable blood glucose levels? Is it better to have smaller meals more frequently or three larger meals in a day or a small number of larger meals? Uh, oh, okay. This is, this is a good question. So we want to maintain stable glucose levels as much as we can. Um, and the, the meal frequency really depends on the person. You know, we've seen people have success with that one meal a day. And then we've seen people have success with the three meals a day. You know, ideally one meal will hold you over to the next one. And then some may need a snack in there. But mm -hmm. um, like we mentioned, when you're having those like constant meals and constantly snacking, you can be on that yeah. roller coaster. So we want to make sure that we're, um, you know, checking in. Like if you're hangry, you need to snack every five minutes. And maybe we focus on making those meals super balanced, making sure you're having protein, you're having um, healthy fats, you're having you know, fiber filled carbohydrates to help hold you over to the next meal. Um, so it yep. really, and on the person and your activity level, and there's so much that goes into it. Um, mm -hmm. so it's not like a one size fits all, uh, which I wish I could just three meals a day, but that's, yeah, that's just, yeah. that's just not the case. But, um, but, but the good news is, is that when you have this, you're going to be able to determine for you, okay, is it better for me to have three big meals a day, or is it better for me to snack throughout the day? And I think the key to it is, is what you're eating more than yeah. how frequently you're eating, but you're going to get that information too. You know, you're going to say, okay, having three meals a day kept me in the range better than along the way, having all these different little, you know, snacks here and there. So, uh, I mean, yeah. it really becomes clear once you get onto this, 
um, what's actually going on. Let's see what we have next. Um, uh, let's see. There's a bunch of stuff. We're, we're covering quite a bit of stuff here. This is really great. I have a really big sweet tooth, and this is this is my question. <laughs> what can I eat to satisfy this without having to give up my dessert? This is yes. So, and I know. I know like there's a large percentage of the population who really have a sweet tooth. I'm one of them. So this is a good question. Yeah. And it's, it's checking in to see like, it, do you, are you eating for emotional reasons? Is it stress? You know, yeah. what, what is causing you to like kind of crave those sweets? It could even be anything like nutrient deficiencies where you can get further testing, see if you're maybe deficient in magnesium or, um, you know, there, there's a lot of things that you can test, but. We're not saying that you have to live a life without any desserts, but you know, we're being um, like the best choices that we can and, you know, optimizing the timing. Like for example, you know, I was eating like, (laughs) I was eating dark chocolate and frozen cherries. That was my dessert and I would eat it late at night. Like I mentioned earlier and I'd see a huge spike, but just taking that, pouring it and eating it at the end of my meal, I'm not satisfied. And I'd get like a good, you know, dark chocolate and I just like savor it and enjoy it, you know? So maybe experimenting with like eating it at the end of your meal, you know, versus having a carb alone on its own, like especially late at night. And then maybe taking a walk afterwards. Like these are things that you can incorporate to help mitigate that spike. But we're not saying that you can't ever have dessert. Um, right. But right. It, like, yeah, because that's, that's, that's very difficult for, for me to do. And for a lot of people as well, too. I like, I let go from time to time, but like, like I mentioned earlier, and like you just said, you, there are things you can do like food order. And I've done some tests on my page where I did, I took the exact same amounts of food and I ate them in the wrong order and I ate them in the right order. And it's significant. I think I had like a 40 to 50% difference. I think it was 50% difference just in the food order alone. And you can figure that out when you have this on. You say, this is my favorite meal. You know, whatever your favorite meal is, lasagna or whatever. What happens if I have a salad before the lasagna and maybe some protein and then have the lasagna versus not having that? And you're going to see, and you say, okay, I'm going to just include my veg with that. I'm going to have a a vegetable starter. Yeah. Uh, And you can do stuff about it, but you don't know if you're not monitoring, right? Yeah. I mean, you just don't know. You don't know. And for the food order, we'll recommend starting off with vegetables, you know, and then your protein, your fats, and then your carbs last in the meal. Yeah. And doing this when is, you know, best for you. So like if you're eating, I don't know, something that's all mixed together, then that's okay. But like, if you can get a vegetable starter, whether it's like a, a salad or just like any bites of like some vegetables as a side, if you eat that first, what I mm. have done, actually, like some of our members have tried this too, and they recommended this is like even if you're eating a dinner, like making a bowl. So like if I eat pasta, which is a weekly dinner in our house, um, we have like a red lentil pasta that we love. And so I'll put the pasta yeah. in the box and then like do like a ton of spinach and like cheese and then um, the, the uh, protein on top. And I put the pasta on the bottom. So that's what, what I'm eating less. So I'm getting like all that yeah. spinach broccoli first. And then like just by the way, I'm put plating it. I'm eating the carbs last. So Trying to start off your um, just your meal with any type of vegetable or any type of fiber is going to be really helpful in mitigating that spike. Yeah, and the, the results are surprising. Like there's significant results with it too. It's not just oh, it's doing a little bit. Like I've done tests. There's a big thing online where you can increase the resistant starch in bread if you freeze it. So I froze the bread We've a- and I tested it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a small change. It's not huge. So people, it's not a free ticket to eat bread. You still like it might be a ten or a five to ten percent difference, but you're still spiking when you eat most of these breads. And then somebody told me, "Well, you gotta freeze it and then toast it." So I did that test. I froze the bread overnight and I toasted it, and it was still terrible. So you gotta be careful with the information that you get online, and you know, and even if it is correct, even if the information is statistically there, is scientific, you know, research done on it you as an individual may react differently. So it's not a one size fits all, right? Yeah, someone else bread and be fine. And I always give this example of our CEO who will eat, you know, a lot of rice at night in his meals. And 
he, no mm. stuff whatsoever. But if yeah. I eat a meal rice late at night, then I am definitely seeing a spike on that. My husband didn't see as big of a spike. So it really is, it's so, it just depends on you, your stress, your activity levels, um, yeah. you know, and it's got microbiome. There's so many factors that play a role, but that's sure. what, that's where you use the CGM and you see what works best for you. Like I found the um, pasta that I love that works for me because I don't want to give up pasta, you know, right. I just spike work. We have members that say, oh, I can't, I spike to fruit. Why? I can't ever eat fruit again. And we're saying, no, that's not the case. Like, let's try to experiment and let's take that fruit first, not eat, eat it alone on its own. Maybe you pair it with a uh, protein to fat. Maybe you do like a couple of hard boiled eggs and handful of nuts with it and see if that helps. Now there's, or maybe you have it around the time of your workout. There's so many action steps that you can take yeah. and that's the GM to experiment and, and not just saying like, okay, I can't ever eat fruit again because that spikes me because you know, when we eat these carbs, they, you're, you are going to see a rise in your glucose and, and that's sure. just the natural digestion of these carbs. So we, we want to avoid the Snickers, the Big Macs and things like that. Um, but, and then play around see what's best for us with like the real food carbs. Right. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, uh, another thing that I discovered with this as well, too, is that, you know, and they're always, you always hear everywhere that go for the whole wheat breads are better than the white, high liver, fine white breads. I've tested all this. Like I've tested the regular Durham pasta and the whole wheat Durham pasta, tiny little difference, like a tiny little difference. So it's still spiking. It's not a significant difference uh, at all. And I would have never known that. I just would have been buying the hype and saying, okay, well, it's no big deal. I'm eating, I'm going to Subway and I'm going to get the whole wheat uh, bun and that's going to solve all the problems. Not the case. Yeah. Not the case And I am first to just be a detective and read food labels. Like something can say whole wheat yeah. and then turn it around. It has like three or four different sources of added sugars. And like the wheat is like, what? I mean, it's, you really want to read food labels so you know um, what is in your food. I always pretend that like everything in the grocery store is just like blank on the front and then flip it over, read the ingredients. And um, that's always yeah. going to be like, but even before reading like the calories or anything like that, I always read the ingredients first. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Uh, and, you know, if there's one thing to look at, it's that it's that net carbs uh, or the or the sugar content as soon as you see that that sugar is above like you know a certain amount it's like okay i want to try to avoid this one yeah i think it's it's sugar is in everything it's yeah. it's in a lot of food it's surprising things that it, it's in like things that taste savory you know that have added sugars and that's why i always yeah. recommend this yeah like so you and, and a lot of sugar, like a can of tomato soup is really high in sugar. It's like alarming when you start looking at it. Okay. Uh, what is a good example of a healthy breakfast to break your fast? And we touched on that earlier, how important that first meal of the day is to kind of set yourself up. What's a good, what's a good breakfast? Yeah, I would say making sure that we're starting off with protein in the morning. So whether yeah. that's or a protein, a good quality protein powder, whether it's a whey protein or a vegetarian source, Greek yogurt, tofu, like just trying to get that protein in the morning um, and then pairing that with healthy fats, whether that's avocados, nuts, nut butter, and then carbs, you know, whether it's like a whole grain carb, like a steel cut oat or a um, fruit or veggies. If you can get veggies in the morning, like yes. most carbs, amazing. I always try and challenge um, our members to get vegetables in that morning meal. And, and it can be simple if you're making a smoothie, you can throw a ton of vegetables in there. Um, that's yeah. a way to like insert, scramble some vegetables with your eggs. Um, that's a good way to get those in the morning too. Yeah. When I do these tests, like I did um, broccoli, just steamed broccoli by itself, six ounces of fresh broccoli on an empty stomach. And then I wait for the two hours to see what it does to my blood sugar. Broccoli did nothing for my blood sugar levels. It was nice and steady, but the way I felt when I ate just broccoli by itself was amazing i felt great i felt clear i felt energetic for hours until you know it was time for me to eat lunch again so it really is important to get that first meal down and, and when you compare that to my snickers tests it's like night and day energy levels it's just awful 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 yeah okay. and, and you to get these meals these breakfast meals with added sugars like the yogurts with that or like the oatmeal that you can add a lot of you know it's 
it can easily or the cereals or the baked goods you know we really really want to make sure we're getting those protein those healthy fats those fiber filled carbs yeah. to start off. yeah yeah so we've been at this for uh, uh over an hour Alyssa can you believe that <laughs> no I can't I know no. I think we should wrap it up, but you know what? I want to do this again because there are a ton more questions yeah. um, that a lot of people want to know about. And I think this was a really valuable time that we spent here doing this. I want to thank you for that. And I want to remind everybody that if you want to try the Signos out for yourself, there is a link in my bio and you get a 15% discount when you order through that link. I highly recommend it. It's been a game changer for me. You can see all my tests. So um, with that, thank you again for your time. I know you're very busy over there. So thank you for doing this. And I hope we get to do it again soon. Yes. Yes. Thank you for having me.